Well, hello, boys and girls. It's when we feel like it o'clock. I'm Pearl of Wisdom, and you're listening to my NHL Pearls of Wisdom. And this is Joe Boric, one of the finest in the land. Great uh, hockey commentator and uh, prognosticator. Also, a fine capper for ball and hockey, which we do on BPAL Picks uh, on Patreon. Thank you all for uh, your subscriptions to that and the channel and hitting the like button lately. It's been fantastic. Um, we uh, we just came into some information. Actually, it's not just we just came into the information. It's kind of been floating around for a while, but now it's even on TSN. Like TSN just put out their top uh players to be traded in 2020 list and the number five one which by the way i've been kind of calling for i i did a video not too long ago with it when i didn't know joe about the fact that i thought the lion a was going to be gone when his contract was coming up and that's the person it's lion a so we thought what the heck for fun why don't we look at some of the places the lion a may go and we scoured the league and uh, came up with a, with one team in particular that I personally think he may go. Maybe Joe thinks he might go somewhere else as well. But uh, um, what, first of all, uh, let, well, I'll even actually bring it up about the reason why Lion A is out. I mentioned it in the video. Lion A has, in Winnipeg, was has been played on the third line an awful lot. This is the sort of thing they did to Truba. They trade play, they, they uh, Truba, who got traded to the New York Rangers, they were playing him in the 5-6 spot for a long time. And then when his contract came up, they were like, well, you know, your numbers, blah, blah, blah. And uh, it really looked like Winnipeg was doing this on purpose to be able to keep their cap in check by playing a guy lower than he was supposed to. At the time, Truba clearly was their top, uh, top four defenseman for them. But they were playing him lower minutes. Probably went on the lean there. You're a younger player. You got to work your way up, stuff like that. He got fed up and out he went. Same thing with Solani. He's, then he saw Solani or Solani, Lion A. I keep on calling him Solani because he reminds me of Solani in a <laughs> lot of ways. Yeah, team Solani. Yeah. <laughs> Same thing with Lion A. And he signed a bridge deal. And now I think he's like, you know what? I'm done here. Uh, this is not going well. Uh, also, Lion A has a personality. He kind of comes off as a lazy type guy and a laissez fair type player. I don't know. I could be wrong about that, but it's not the first I've heard of it. I've heard rumblings about it from around the league. Uh, his buddy, Puglia Harvey, the reason why I didn't want him to be drafted by the Edmonton Oilers was because he had the same kind of personality. And I just think it's start, they're starting to break apart. Um, Winnipeg needs defense, and they're looking to trade him out. So, Joe, what do you think about all this yourself? Uh, yeah, I think he likely, if Winnipeg's trying to do, which they say they're trying to do, win in the next couple years, uh, with Wheeler there, obviously, they're going to have to shore up their team. And the easiest way to shore up their team is obviously trading Patrick Line because you should get at least two good assets back for him, if not – three depending on what type of assets you look to get so yeah the, um a team that you hinted at because they always get people that are buried in lineups of other teams for no reason uh would be the uh the rangers could make sense another team because they're looking for offense and um scoring if they could somehow move their cap around they did pretty good in the playoffs this year that i just thought of when i saw line it was being traded well dallas sucks at scoring so i thought well what's an easy way to fix your scoring have patrick line a play with tyler Sagan. <laughs> so that's a that's a pretty that's a pretty darn easy way to fix your scoring so that that one uh kind of just popped in my head as a as a possibility as well for Patrick Line, they would have to move some guys, but they would be okay there. And Minnesota's already committed to saying they want to revamp their team. So if they're saying they want to revamp, and they kind of use the words revamp and retool, they never used rebuild. So yeah. if they're actually doing revamp, retool, that could mean maybe they would bring in a Patrick Line. If they're doing rebuild, they probably wouldn't want to give up a lot of assets for Line, but it depends what they're lingo actually is 
that they're using in the organization, where to the public, it seems like retool, not rebuild at all, which would mean that could work because you would have to get rid of some assets, but you already have veterans, and then you would have Patrick Line. And then obviously, if you get a goalie, voila, you have a pretty solid team there. So the, the key then would just be having a goaltender. And then once you get that goalie, you're set. So. Yeah, those are two two good options. Uh, I, I I think they would be a little wary of trading them within the division. Uh, probably. But, yeah. With Minnesota. Uh, also, Minnesota would probably be have to give up a guy like Dumba in that trade because they'll definitely be looking for defense. And their defense is not what you call deep already. Um, I think it would hurt their might hurt their defense a little too much. As far as Dallas, I did think of that right away too. I was with you on that. Um, they uh, again, Dallas is not what you call deep in prospects. The guy they would probably be kind of thrown out there because uh, I've heard maybe a little bit of dissatisfaction in him lately was John Klingberg. In fact, uh, that would be probably who they would be looking at. Now, again, you lose Klingberg, and I didn't see Jason Robertson. Oh, no, sorry. For defense, I didn't really see Thomas Harley. That's right. Thomas Harley's coming up. He could be a guy they could put in there. Gavin Bayreuther is an unrestricted free agent, but he hasn't really panned out. They're not super deep on defense to get rid of a guy like that. But it's something I think they would seriously consider. Yeah. And like you said, they're kind of capped out. So they would yeah. ha- definitely have to give up some cap back in return in order to do that. And when I looked at it, I just thought, I don't – maybe Rupe Heinz. I mean, Rupe yeah. Hintz. Rupe yeah. Hintz and, and Klingberg, because uh, they got to re-sign them right now. But that's not really giving much cap back. So I'm uh, – I, I don't know if that would work out, although it's a very good thought, and it certainly would help their team a lot. And I sh- I'm sure they would be on the phone if Lion now, A was looking to be available. Yeah. Now, there's one other team in our division that is not the Rangers that could try to go after Patrick Lion A, and I think we know where I'm going with this. Yeah, uh, I know where you're going. And <laughs> Pittsburgh. Oh, old Pittsburgh. Okay, you did throw me for a loop. Uh, yeah, okay. Because... They keep saying, we're going for it, we're going for it, we're going for it. They don't care about their draft picks. So they're trading their next draft pick out if they have to. Plus, they're probably trade their top prospect if they have to because it seems like they're just going, win now, win now, win yeah. now, win now. So prospects, a, prospects. a team that definitely could look to get line A if they could fit it into their structure, would be Pittsburgh uh, because they're just going for it and they might not even care about the whole future. It's just we have Patrick Line for next year. We think we can win the Cup next year would probably be their mindset too. Yeah. Again, uh, as far as Pittsburgh is concerned, you're looking at defensive struggles already. Uh, Justin Schultz being out. I mean, Jack Johnson's on their top six. So... <laughs> <laughs> who are you looking at i mean i think they'd be looking at marcus peter Peterson, and i know they really love peterson uh uh that would be the first player i would be looking at john marino i doubt very much they're going to even like think about john marino leaving that organization even if it was straight up for for lion a i, I they would be like ah no we, just, we need him too bad in our d <laughs> Um, and then I guess you could think of Chris Latang, and uh, that's a possibility. If they're going older, yeah. Well, look at the all the MNTC no movement clause. Like he's ironclad, no movement clause. Uh, would you like to go to Winnipeg, Mr. Latang? Um, no, I'm fine, thanks. All right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's the biggest problem that Winnipeg really has is. They have that god awful winters there that they have a difficult time getting free agents and such. Um, it is a good thought. I'm sure Pitts, I'm sure Rutherford would be calling them up to see maybe you know, hey, how about Jason Zucker that we just got to even up the money and uh, Jason Zucker and Marcus Peterson or something like that. Uh, again, then your defense is looking pretty slack and you have no cap room to do anything with it. So it would seem to me like not a likely destination, but definitely a good thought. Yeah, it's just because they're going for it, and I don't think Pittsburgh cares about 
their overall success five years from now. I think they're trying to figure out how to do it now and they'll worry about that later. Uh, yeah, so, certainly would go a long ways to do it. I mean, so Lion A playing with Sidney Crosby would be fun to watch. Yeah. Um, or Malcolm. Yeah. yeah. Now, another team in division, they have to start paying people in a couple of years, so they got to be careful with the young guys. They have to start paying, but they're trying to build something there in terms of a foundation. Do I think they'll get Patrick Line? No, because their owners are doofus. But the Devils could potentially be a team that's mentioned in there somewhere because they're trying to build and grow something. The problem is their owners are doofus. So he would have to actually give them probably a little bit more money, and he's a complete idiot. So um, that might not happen. But yeah, I, if, yeah. but if, if they actually are able to spend a little bit more and do that, that would probably behoove them because I don't know about you. Having Jack Hughes, Nico Heeshear, uh and Patrick Laine, and Nikita Gusev, and Jesper Brett, like I can just keep going. As young forwards, it's pretty nice to have on your team if you're a head coach in New Jersey. Like I'm pretty sure I would feel pr- pretty nice, warm, and fuzzy inside. Uh, they, are, of, they are pretty yeah, soft. They would be pretty percent. soft, though. Oh, they, yeah, yeah, but then I'll just... And they like, don't have the defense at all to make that trade. Like, they just can't afford to give up any defense. There's no way. The and defense. Peg's not taking Subban back. There's no way. Yeah, so. that's the only guy that they would have potentially been able to um do there. Unless if uh, their take, because uh, when he's not injured, he had a down year this year. But Butcher's a pretty good defenseman, and Damon Severson, if you throw in draft picks... uh with them they might i mean we know the devil's draft picks if they just get line a and kind of need to still fill in would probably be a team that's better after next season not next season and then they would sign line a because he's only 23 and it would be like i said part of building their team so if you get a draft pick from them it would probably still be pretty solid for next particular season when connor carrick's still uh, one of your best uh Defenseman who's great at podcasting, but not the most consistent. Uh, Def- defense. Defenseman. Uh, yeah. So, and, and that might make sense. They could give up like one of their firsts here in the first round, like that is much has a lot of value. Uh, which case, Winnipeg would definitely consider that if they were a team that could go out and grab free agents, because you're getting right, you're taking it right off the cap. But, again, Winnipeg is not known for being able to draw free agents very well. And part of that reason as well is because, like I just said, the way they've treated Lion A and Truba, if I'm there, not only the cold weather, but look at how they already treated some of their players already. Why would I want to go there and to be treated like that possibly? So uh, that they've really shot themselves in the foot that way in, in perception, in the perception of their team. Um, so, anyways... You're right. You mentioned it. Uh, do you have any other team? I thought maybe Carolina uh, as a that possibility. One. I'm just thinking of the whole money. You got Svechny, uh, Svechnikov. You're going to have to pay big bucks. Uh, you're going you're gonna to have line A. And Carolina's not known to be the team that says, let's start spending like fancy people. That's normally not the Carolina Hurricanes. So they would have to go against their normal organizationals unwritten rules quote unquote uh where i don't know if they would do that or not but if they're willing to do it it would probably be a good organizational move because you have a very good defense already you have offense that's pretty good but you can make it better and then if you get a goalie obviously that's more consistent that would uh, or uh, nadelkovich who they like develops uh into what they believe he could be that also would help you as well so yeah, I mean, they got Pesci, they, uh, who was injured, or Hamilton. There's been talk, I don't know why, but Hamilton. Uh, guys that they could put out there, and uh, it would be a pretty sick offense if they got Lion A. But I, 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 with all the reasons, like you said, they're not a cap team, probably. They haven't built that organization up where they have enough of a fan base or television rights to, to be a cap team, which makes it very difficult for them. So I think that's difficult. And then, so basically, I don't, I don't think there's really anyone that's going to, else is going to make sense there. The Buffalo Sabres would probably make a play. Uh, I thought about that, but I, I didn't see really the assets there to be able to bring Lion A. Um, it's possible. They, they, that would have to be like, um, uh, looking up at the, 
That, that would have to be, it would all depend on how much they like the one defenseman that keeps on being on the trade block all the time, and that's Rasmus Ristolainen. Uh, it could possibly work out to give Rasmus Ristolainen and Sam Reinhardt as an RFA uh, and to have uh, Lion A play with Eichel. I- I'm sure Buffalo would be very interested in this. I'll put them as the second team most likely to have an opportunity for that because they do have Ristolainen and they do have some defensive depth uh, and uh, they're desperate. They're desperate to get a to make Eichel happy after his comments and stuff like that. Uh, It would be a sick combination, probably. But let's get to the team that I picked. I could finally get them going, maybe. (laughs) Yeah, finally get them going. Uh, My pick, for sure, you already mentioned it, would be the New York Rangers. And it really makes me sick to my stomach to say that. But uh, (laughs) they have this organization has built themselves depth in every area of their team, including goaltending. Maybe a little light on defense, but probably not too bad. They have a guy that they're very, very huge on in Keandre Miller, who might even be ready to play next year. Um, They have Jacob Truba, D'Angelo, Ryan Lindgren, Adam Fox. Uh, Stall, whatever. Hijik's also whatever. solid. Uh, Libor Hijik played solid this year. Libor Hijik, yeah. They yeah. got a lot of depth on their D. They have a lot of depth on their forwards to go. I mean, they're talking about uh, trading off Ryan Strom and because uh, they just have too many men, too many guys. Ryan Strom played well for them last year, but he doesn't seem to be a, a fit. He's an RFA and uh, they they got Philip Heidel there, who they would rather play in that spot. So I say my I say this they are the most equipped to make this trade. Um, Philip Heidel and I would be going for Philip Heidel and Ryan Lindgren. I would take that straight up. I wouldn't. I would, I'd be happy if I just got those two players for Lion A. Heidel is a already putting up almost half a point a game as a 20 year old he he can play wing he can play center he's learning the defensive side of the game but his offensive side there's nothing to worry about that guy's going to be fantastic winnipeg uh has wheeler playing in the middle but he can definitely play wing just as well and uh you could throw heidel in there and uh be um very equipped for your top six for a long time. They also have the cap room to sign the kit. The big thing that's going to, and Ryan Lindgren, I love, I love, I love, I love. Um, people yeah, are seeing played Pelich. first line minutes already. Yeah. People are seeing uh, Pelich in on the island right now uh, and seeing how he's no longer underrated maybe anymore. He's getting some exposure. He's one fantastic defensive defenseman. And I think Ryan Lindgren is in that mold and maybe could be better. Uh, the problem here is, is this is going to make the Rangers think. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you're using your guy that's already on your top pair defense at 22 years old, and you're losing a guy that you think could be in your top six offense at 21 years old will be next year. So uh, that's a uh, tough uh, thing to swallow. But you're getting a 23-year-old that – if all your cards get played right, you put them in all the perfect right situations is one of the best guys in the league. So at his yeah. position. So it definitely yeah. is a thing to think, especially when you have Hijik and others that can step up um, in the place. of not, not play like Ryan Lindgren, but step up and play minutes. Um, and you have a solid defense, as you said. So they're definitely a team that could do it. Uh, and if they get Patrick Line, if they don't get Patrick Line, they're probably going to be a lot of people's early pick for the Stanley Cup coming into next year. But if they get Patrick Line, the Rangers are definitely going to be a lot of people's early picks for the Stanley Cup coming into next year. Because if you draft Lafreniere or have Patrick Line, uh, in that case, you would potentially keep Ryan Strom. So you would have Ryan Strom still, who really did well with you if you trade a. Uh, Heidel and uh, Lingard, I doubt you're going to move Strom at that point. And then you still have Panarin, Zabenejad, <laughs> Krastoff. Yeah, they also like that Krastoff kid who hasn't really played at all yet, Kako. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah, Kako. Yeah, so 
I mean, yeah, their team's just going to be ridiculous. It's going to be like an all-star team, potentially, if you get Patrick Laine on your team. Uh, the more I'm thinking about it, the more I think Ryan Lindgren would be a no-go. I think they would be going uh, something. They would rather toss up Anthony D'Angelo, and then they would give up Heidel and maybe one of their first this year. And I might even do that if I'm Winnipeg. That, I think they, the first they got for Brady Shea, 13th overall, uh, like their prospect pool is already stacked. Uh, Winnipeg could use that pick uh, to to increase their prospect pool. They'd also not be getting any uh, much cap back at all. So uh, although I do believe that uh, D'Angelo would have to be signed, which you could probably get yeah. in the form dollar range, and uh, they would still have then some cap room if they can convince a free agent <laughs> to come to Winnipeg. Maybe like, oh, we already talked. One thing we talked about was that one guy that they likely will get is Hamannick. So um, the, the problem there is Anthony Giangelo is a right-handed defenseman. And uh, Winnipeg, really, it, it, it's left defense that they really are probably more interested in. But I think it's a, that's a deal that's possible. I think that's a deal that's very possible. I, mostly because of my love and I think everybody's love for Heidel. Heidel's upside is fantastic. And D'Angelo is a good offensive defenseman. Yeah, he keeps going up. And this year in terms of some of the metric defensive numbers, he looked a little bit better. So if that can continue to slowly but surely improve, then he's going to get better as an overall defenseman, too. It's kind of a slow progression, but he's great on offense. So, I mean, if a guy gets 59 points as a freaking defenseman every year, I don't th- or 53 points as a defenseman every year, I don't think you're going to be bitching too much about his defense uh, as long as you have a pretty good defenseman with him back there. But his numbers have slightly looked better, so if that continues to happen, then he'll be okay. And obviously in Winnipeg, I mean, you're probably going to put him with – uh, I would think uh, Morrissey, wouldn't you? Give them the best opportunity to play with their best, pl- the best defense. Yeah. We'll have to go and see how it all works out, and then you would have Pionk playing with uh, maybe you re-sign Kulikov or go out and try to find a left de- a left defenseman as well, uh, something of that nature. But your defense certainly looks a lot better than it did last year with D'Angelo in there. Especially your your Sorry? power, your power play also looks significantly better yeah. with uh, Tony D'Angelo as a because def- you already have Pionk who looked really good on the power play coming over and and just overall, and then you have D'Angelo now who's also going to be a quarterback on your power play, which is one of his favorite things to do, obviously. So that's going to uh, work out well as well if that happens. And another one that you could look at because we already mentioned them if they're going to be so solid on. Uh, Lindgren, which I believe that they're just beastly solid on Lindgren, because like you said, it's a 22-year-old. He's already playing top-line minutes. Uh, you could go after Keandre Miller. He probably will be ready next year. Now, uh, that's not going to – I don't know. You're going to have to ease him into the lineup a little bit. But for the long term on your defense, uh, and not too long term, he's looking very, very good. And he's a left defenseman, so you could work him in quick. And then – Try to fill out your defense with some free agents if you can possibly find him. Maybe T.J. Brody played in Calgary. It's pretty cold there. He's up for a free agency. Maybe he'll come over to Winnipeg. No. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, I could see a Brody. I mean, maybe. I think Brody might come back. He might go, I've been back in my home area. It's a little cold up here. Let me try to uh, – let me go see if somebody down in the States is like, hey, T.J., uh, we could use your services. Um, but – uh, we're yeah. seeing, unless if he goes to unless if he goes to Edmonton because Edmonton could also uh, use him. But other than that, uh, I could see him coming to a little bit of a nicer climate uh, per se to to uh, play next year. <laughs> I think there's going to be a lot of people vying for TJ or for Brody this year because in normal years maybe not, but there's not a big def- defense unrestricted free agent market, and there's a lot of teams looking for defense. As I was going through this, I went through teams and I went through team after team that I'm sure would like to have them, but they just couldn't 
rape their defense any more than they already have. So it tells you the weak, the weakness on D. That's the reason why you got guys like Holland that again is looking to in Edmonton that's looking to draft maybe another defenseman again. I've always said it is like if you got an opportunity to grab a really good defenseman, do it because defensemen are one of the hardest things to find in the league. Uh, it used to be something that people do. Now it was like centers. But I think uh, I would be drafting defense as much as I possibly could. Um, Winnipeg also has Sandberg. And uh, you also mentioned a guy that they've been uh, pretty bullish on for a while, but he's a slow burn Stanley. Uh, and he- Helena. He- uh, that's the reason why maybe they won't want D'Angelo because Heinela is a lot the same as D'Angelo. And now you got Pionk. And there's a lot of the same defensemen back there. Yeah. The only thing that could help them is the fact that uh, Pionk really, really improved his defensive numbers compared to past years. And what Tony D'Angelo went like that, uh, Pionk's defensive numbers went like that. Yeah. So yeah. if that stays the same, then you kind of have a more of a two-way guy there that's just fantastic at offense and good at defense. Um, where with D'Angelo, you have a guy that's very meh at defense right now, but very good at offense, where I would say at best average at defense because his numbers went up a little bit. Um, so, yeah, that would be an interesting dynamic because of the way their lines shape out. They probably could figure it out because you could put uh, Pionk with um, – Uh, you could put, well, if you keep Kulikov, I would honestly just keep that as your line. And then you would have either Heen Hola or, um, D'Angelo with Morrissey. And then you would put D'Angelo with another, I would get a defensive defenseman, unless if you want to keep Tucker Pullman or Nathan Belayu, uh, somebody that's more defensive oriented on your third line for whoever is down there, Heen Hola or D'Angelo, whatever guy you decide to not put with Josh Morrissey. So you could you could probably because of the other side they have more defensive oriented guys work it out. It would be a weird dynamic though, but uh, it would be an exciting dynamic if it works because your offense is going to be disgusting along with your defense's offense is going to be disgusting potentially on paper. And if the if Peon keeps playing the level he is and D'Angelo increases incrementally by a slim margin each year on his own end as well, rather than just offensively. It will be a very exciting trade for their team. Uh, you just have to see how it plays out. And if you get if you get Heidel in that trade, uh, Tony D. I don't know. Was, yeah, I don't think he's going to be the highest on if Heidel's playing to his level is going to be the guy that everyone in Winnipeg's thinking of anyway. Unless if he keeps putting up fifty three points, then by default you're going to think of him along with Heidel. <laughs> so, yeah, interesting okay. dynamic for sure. There's a lot of places they could go. If they were to do that other trade and they had their first round pick, they could possibly try to use that first to scoop a, another defenseman. Or um, there's some defensemen down in that lower area, like Schneider, uh, Goulet, uh, that maybe they could be interested. But, you know, those, those guys are probably a, a year or two away. Uh, Dylan Sandberg, it's hard to say what he's going to when he's going to be ready as well. So down the road, your defense wouldn't look too uh, Winnipeg's defense wouldn't look too bad. And again, all of this was really happening. Maybe it's possible after saying all of this that the Lion A being traded thing is just a way for them to uh, uh, as a play to because it's contracts coming up and get him to look at his contract numbers but i personally don't think lion is taking any hometown discount to stay in winnipeg i've actually would go the exact opposite i think he's probably going to say if i'm going to stay here you're going to have to give me top dollar and um i i just think there's a falling out there i just don't think that he it's worked out in the organization and He's likely on his way. And uh, from what we've said, I think the Rangers are the best play for it. One thing for sure, like you said, if the Rangers do get Lion A, you're looking at a possible Stanley Cup team next year already. Uh, pos- dynasty. Dynasty, really. Yeah. No, yeah, that's a team. That's not. That's a team that could uh, easily turn into another dynasty and be win more than Chicago probably did. Um, with that on paper. So, 
that's yeah. uh, that's how scary because Chicago didn't have a goalie that you were saying is the like Corey Crawford was good. Don't get me wrong, he's a good goaltender, but they don't have a goalie that everyone was saying is the next best thing since Slice. Like they they didn't have that coming up. They didn't have a generational everything goalie. else. Yeah, when you still have a Hall of Famer as your other goalie, who by the way actually looked good in the playoffs. So he so I mean like that. That's not the sweetest com- or combination for other teams that are in your division thinking about it going into the season. So, Okay, boys and girls, that's our full 42. My gosh, we did a full, full episode today. I was really excited when I heard that. It just sounds like a lot of fun. I hope you have fun with this stuff. I love the rumors and where they're going to go and trades and trying to look at what that team is going to look like and all that kind of stuff like that. And it seems like you do too, since our viewership is growing, our subscribers are growing. Thank you for hitting that button and hitting the bell and sticking with us. This has been from BPAL, my NHL Pearls of Wisdom. That's Joe Bork. Joe Bork's one of the finest in the land for sure. You can get all of our information on www.steelflyers.com. There you can find our Patreon, everything that Joe Borg does. He writes for, like, everybody. I don't know. <laughs> you can find it all. Nitty-gritty, all the stuff that he does, all the stuff that I do. And ju- watch for that website. It is absolutely going to be amazing. You will not be disappointed. That's my full 42. Have a great day. Lots of love to you.